Hi folks, welcome back. This is session 13, part 3. We are discussing about clustering techniques and we already discussed about the Dirichlet process and how to implement them. So now we're going to talk a little bit about how to fit a Dirichlet process into our data, okay? So if you recall, uh, in the discrete uh, case, we have um, these uh, ci uh, variables the set i here and we're interested in seeing when this uh, variable corresponds to a, a given cluster okay and for these we're going to use all other latent variables we're following again the not notation so everything that is not the the i uh, set variable and are using our data and our previous parameters over here. And this should be proportional to the probability of set i being equal to uh, cluster k. And we want to use the um, some kind of uh, of the uh, for model dependency here. And we want to predict this uh, set i just based on the other latent and our parameter that corresponds to the classes. So this should be uh, depending on this set, not i, and alpha, and then times the likelihood of the data. So this is our xi given all the x's that are not i, the set i equal to cluster k, all the other set variables on lambda, okay? And this is the general form, okay? But we're interested in a, in a particular one, so let's go one by one. So this one, the first one, the set i equal to k given set not i and alpha. So again, what is the likelihood of belonging to a given cluster given all the other uh, latent and our alpha and this marginal as we saw before this will correspond to a Dirichlet process so this will be alpha plus n minus one since we have the correct one here and we have this alpha times indicator function of set i belonging to k star plus the summation of all the other clusters, okay? So all the n, uh, k, and not i, okay? So the count for that cluster that do not correspond to my sample here, and uh, the indicator function that I'm in that particular cluster, okay? And if you recall, this is the whole count. So when we're implementing this, this is equivalent to just thinking about this count that we have and normalizing it over alpha uh, plus n minus, oh, sorry, minus one here. And then using the alpha plus n minus one also. And this is if the cluster uh, K has been seen and this otherwise. So this is telling me that the likelihood of seeing this uh, uh, K cluster here is the count over the whole amount of data if that cluster has been seen or just my prior count in case I haven't seen uh, that cluster. So the whole idea here is just using the amount of, of uh, data that I have for that particular cluster, and then just adding um, more into that cluster. So this is um, kind of paradoxical uh, paradox here because it may happen that rich gets richer, okay? So if you have a cluster with a large amount of data, it may just happen that you just keep putting more and more into that particular cluster. But uh, 
that may be a mistake or you may want to diversify because this cluster is just adding up all of the data and instead of having a good fit is just growing and growing and growing. And in that case, we need more complex uh, models to, to change that particular uh, thing. So yeah, that, that is one of, of the problems that we need to address uh, when we are implementing these, these particular things. But nevertheless, the whole idea here again is just using the counts for uh, as likelihood and again using our priors as um, as a way of creating new clusters so this is the same idea of uh, avoiding the zero count when we are working with the DHLA processes here and then uh, the second term here is our posterior predictive distribution of the cluster k so this is the pxi given the a, the other data that are not I, given my cluster, given my other variables, and given my lambda. And what I'm going to do here is just to simplify this and apply some um, some dependencies on the on the parents and who I depend uh, directly from. So I'm going to just say that this likelihood is simply my my previous data, the sorry, the, the other data, and the xi is in the k cluster and my lambda here. So I'm just assuming that I'm going to use the pen on, on the data itself and these uh, set variables are just going to um, marginalize from which data I'm going to feed this. So instead of using all data, I'm just going to use the rest of the data that belongs to that particular cluster that I'm interested in. And um, this is then the joint of xi and the x not i k given lambda over the x not i k given lambda. Okay, so I'm going to compute this as uh, the joint, what is the probability of all the data belonging to k over the likelihood of the data that already belongs to k given that, that lambda parameter over there. Um, and this uh, comes from, from, my, from my model already. So this joint is the interesting part. So this joint over here is my xi, not, a, not i, k, uh, given lambda. And in here, what I wanna, what I did is marginalize my model out, right? So I can just put it in in an explicit form. So this is my p of x i given theta k, the parameters of the model here, times uh, all the other i different from j, from p x j given theta k. And my base measure over here, so theta k given on the theta, theta, theta k. So what we did here again is just do the integral with respect of all the possible parameters that I have, and then I'm just doing the likelihood of the data, right? I'm trying to see what is the fit of all the data with respect of this model, and seeing how likely that model is with respect of my base measure. And this likelihood here will depend on what is the type of model that, that, we, that we want to use for the data. But yeah, so that is one, uh, one restriction. And we can do the same thing for this uh, other uh, distribution, right? Just that uh, we're going to use only the not uh, i data for this. So again, what we are doing is just marginalizing out our model. We're computing all the possible likelihoods that come from the um, from the parameters weighted using this base measure that we are interested in. And in here, if you notice, we have two uh, free parameters, alpha and lambda here. And what we can do to, to solve this um, is just to compute the back propagation um, using gradient, uh, gradient descent from here. And we just need to compute the gradient with respect of these two variables over here. So this is how you will feed it. Now you just feed the data and you'll solve the assignment and see to which cluster um, each of these uh, data points 
belong to, okay? So the next uh, part, we will discuss a little bit of uh, spectral clustering, okay?